Thanks, everybody. This might be the scariest audience I've ever talked to, because I've never had a chance to talk to other moms. So when Christine asked me to speak, the first thing I was thinking about is, I, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what to talk about. And so she encouraged me to talk about something that's been personal to me in technology, and that's really maybe affected the way that, that I work and live. And so that's what I decided to talk about. So I decided to talk about a technology that I adopted roughly seven or eight years ago. It's been important enough to myself and some of my former students that we went and created a company around it. And it's really about the power of tasks. So I want to tell you a little bit about how we use tasks and how that makes a difference. I don't know how many of you are like me, but I've always been a list person. How many of you are list people? Yeah, you know, somehow females tend to be list people. There's something about writing down what you need to take on vacation, what you need to get done at work, what you need to buy at the grocery store. Lists are super, super important, at least to me. And part of what I like about lists is not just remembering what I need to do, it's that feeling of checking it off. You know, it's that it's done, I'm moving on. It's being able to look at it and go, I accomplished something when it feels like there's so much left out there that I need to do at any given moment. So I use lists for everything at some points. I, like I said, the grocery store, the list is super important. The problem is, there's too many of them, right? And they're all on little bits of paper. If you're like me, they're on like a leftover receipt because that's when I had time to write something down. I don't know if I've gotten through the grocery store, especially if the kids are with me, and still had the list with me, which means that I get home and I don't have something that I needed. So somehow this kind of approach was working for me at some level and not working for me at another level. So that's where the idea of tasks come in. Now what are tasks? Well, you can think about them as just being a digital representation of a list. But actually, as you start to really use this idea, it becomes a little bit more and a little bit more alive. For me, a task is not just an entry on a sheet of paper. It's an actionable item. It starts with a verb. It's buy the groceries. It's get the kid the soccer cleats. It's make the presentation for leading moms. It's write the grant proposal. It's prepare the lecture. In making it be actionable, it means that it's something immediate when I look at it. It's something I can go do. I don't have to think about what it is I need to do. It's also something that I know when it's complete, and that's that checking off thing. Without that checking off, it just doesn't work for me. More importantly, with tasks, unlike lists, you can associate some other data. Most importantly, I've found you can put a due date on it. Usually my due dates are set before it's actually due, so that in whatever technology I'm using, it goes red or it flashes or jumps up and down, so that I remember, oh yeah, it really is due tomorrow. It's something that I can say, I should be doing this maybe in the middle of the week, maybe next week, maybe six months for now, because it's a commitment that I've made for later down the road. These two kinds of ideas become really powerful together. I did have a task, prepare a presentation for leading moms. It was scheduled for last Saturday, sadly, because I was in a layover at an airport, and I knew I'd have time to make the presentation at that moment. And it was due for Monday, because Christine had said, you've got to have the slides here by Monday. Or I was a little bit worried about what she might do to me today. <laughs> it's also really important to put categories on these things. What does it have to do about? Is it about your personal life? Is it about your kid's life? Is it about some particular aspect of work? I have many different roles I play, and by putting my tasks into categories, I can decide what role I feel like playing at the moment. Maybe it's kind of a mum moment. So I'll pick a mum task to do. Maybe it's a teaching moment. I'll pick a teaching kind of task to do. When you put them into categories, and they're digital, and they're in technology, you can start to manipulate them. So most importantly, you can view them in different ways. You can view them maybe by the day of the week that you've scheduled it for. Or you can view it by categories. And I happen to use technology that lets you go in and focus on a particular category. So if I have 200 tasks in my list, maybe I'm only seeing 50 at the moment. Maybe I'm only seeing five, because sometimes you need that. So what does my task list look like? Well, here's a view by category of just a few of the, the tasks I might have on. I'll have my UBC tasks. Maybe I have to prepare some lecture. I know that'll take a really long time. Maybe I have to work on a paper with my students. Or maybe it's a piece of paper that I have to return. 
something I have to send in to some particular office. I like to do things like tag my tasks, so I'll just put little lightweight representations that say I have to be at UBC to do this, or I have to be in my car, or I have to be somewhere, so that if I'm looking at this and I'm at home, I just don't even read that part of it. I might have some other tasks that have to do with my corporate parts of my world, or I even have gotten to the point where I have to track every personal task. I have to buy the kid the new soccer cleats, somebody needs a birthday present. You know what these tasks are like, and they're endless. By putting them down, what's amazing to me over the past seven years has been that I take them out of my brain. It's bad enough I carry around the schedule of every member of our family in my head, who has to be picked up when and who has soccer and who's going to trombone lessons tonight. By writing down my tasks, I no longer carry these around in my head. I let them go, and that frees me to have some creative time, because I can know I can look back and find out what I need to do. But like I said, I always find it important to split my views, too. Sometimes I like to pick what I want to do based on where I am or what kind of thing I want to work on. When I'm really working effectively, I spend about a half an hour on Monday mornings scheduling my tasks for that week out per day. I'll flip that around every day as I don't get things done. But if I look at my Wednesday and I say, you know what, I actually have four hours I could work on a lecture on Wednesday continuously, I'll put that task on Wednesday. And I'll let myself go on Monday. I won't spend Monday saying, geez, I've got to go work on that lecture. I'll let myself just focus on the Monday tasks. So the reason I chose this is something to talk briefly about. Seven years ago, and still sometimes today, I'm not going to lie, I feel like I'm sinking. There are so many messages in my email. There are so many incoming web pages I should have read. I haven't looked at the Twitter streams. I've got students who are asking for, for meeting times, and I just feel like I'm sinking. You know, let alone the fact you just realize that the soccer cleats aren't at school for the soccer practice and how are you going to get them there. But with this kind of technology, with using our devices in the right kind of ways, I think we can start to swim on top of it. We can get control of what we need to do. And instead of spending all of my time thinking about what I'm not doing, I can focus on my time on picking something to do, getting it done, and crossing it off, which is the best feeling of all. That's how I hope I think you might be able to improve a little bit of your work day. It works for some people. It doesn't work for others. It's a way of getting on top of things. It's a way of freeing your mind to have that ability to do some creative work and make sure that when you do have time with your family, you're not worrying about the 45 things that you haven't done. Thank you very much.